morning. We want to invite you all to stand with us this morning. Worship. Hopefully everyone thought out from the last week or so. And maybe, looks like a few of you have because you're clapping, so that's, you can move, right? How many of you know his love never fails? Amen. separate even if I ran away your love never fails I know I still make mistakes but you have new mercies for me every day your love never fails You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Take a moment. We're going to sing this song, Shekinah. 
find a glory come release the fullness of your spirit shekinah glory come shekinah glory come and we want more 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 more of your spirit we want more 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 more of your spirit release the fullness of your spirit shekinah glory come shekinah glory come release the fullness of your spirit shekinah glory come shekinah glory come we want more 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 more of your spirit we want more 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 more of your spirit release the fullness of your spirit shekinah glory come shekinah glory come release the fullness of your come before your presence today. Lord, just with grateful hearts that you have blessed us with today and another opportunity to lift up your name on high. I thank you, God, that as the world continues to evolve and change and winds of doctrine are blowing in left and right, we can stand secure, Lord, knowing that you have anchored us, Lord, in your truth. And God, we say today that we will be immovable. Lord, we will not be influenced to the left or the right, but we will keep our eyes stayed on you. We will keep our minds stayed on you. We will keep our heart stayed on you. And Lord, we will not be moved. We will be unshakable, God, because you are unshakable. You are our rock. 
and we stand upon your truth today. And Father, I pray that you would help us not to bend the knee or bow down to the culture, but Lord, that you would help us to shape the Lord, we don't want to be a thermometer in the room, but we want to be the thermostat and we want to set that temperature. And so Lord, we just pray, God, that you would help to set your people upon fire today. And Lord, we pray that you would let your light just shine in us and through us to a dark and a hurting and a lost world. Fill our hearts once again with your spirit and with your love and with your compassion like never before, Lord. Utilize us, immobilize us, and put us to work, Lord. We are your servants, and we pray that your will be done in our lives, Lord. And God, we also take time to pray for our nation. We pray for our community. We pray, Lord, for our city. We pray, God, that your will would be done. We also pray for the church, not just the assemblies of God, but every church that is preaching your word and is proclaiming truth. God, I pray that your anointing would be upon every pastor this morning. And God, I pray that you would increase their efforts to reach their communities like never before. We're all on the same team, and we've got a mission to accomplish. And Lord, before we transition, let me just take a moment to pray for the needs of our church. Lord, as I look out over this congregation, those that are watching online, the needs are so many. But God, we thank you that nothing is too difficult for you. Thank you that you are able to see us through and you've never let us down. So Lord, we cast our burdens upon you because we know that you truly care for us. We pray for Judy, who continues to need a touch at home. Her and her husband, JR, be a strength to him as caregiver. And Lord, we pray that you would bring Judy on to victory, Lord. Help her, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, for Lonnie Boyce's relatives, his mom and his brother, who are needing a touch in the Denver area. Lord, touch them today as only you can. We plead your blood over both of them, and we pray that you would bring healing and strength to them. Bless Lonnie, Lord, and bless his family, I pray as well. Father, we also pray for Virginia Johnson, who's home recovering from same-day surgery this week. God, I just pray that your power and presence would be known and felt in her home right now. And we pray for a speedy recovery and 100% restoration. And for everyone here today whose heart is heavy, Lord, I pray that you would lift the burden. I pray that you'd bring healing, you'd bring restoration, that you would bring about a breakthrough in our lives, God. Have your way, Lord, as we submit to you. Help us to do just that. Submit you. Submit our worries and our thoughts, Lord, our concerns, and lay them down at the foot of your throne. Thank you for loving us, Jesus. We love you. Church, we love him, don't we? Mm. It's in your name we pray, Lord. Everyone said, amen, amen. Well, you can be seated if you can, and if you can't, just stand on up, okay? we got a long service ahead of us, and, and, and you, there's liberty in this place today. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to meet some new people that I see out in the uh, congregation today. We welcome you, and if you're new, we hope that you would take time to connect with us. On the screen, we have a, a QR code that you'll see. And you can just pull out your phone camera and scan that, and that'll take you to our digital connect card. And so you can just drop in a little bit of your information, and this pastoral team will get in touch with you this week and let you know how we can benefit or how we can help serve your family and uh, how we can help you to grow in your faith. But we're glad that you're here. I believe we may have a few gift bags over here at the Get Connected station in the back. Be sure to pick one of those up on your way out. And for those watching online, we welcome you today. Um, we're so glad that you're tuning in from many different states, in some cases, some different countries around the world. It's a powerful thing. And so no matter where you are in the world watching, we pray that the power of God that we're experiencing here will be known and felt in your living room out there. But we are so glad for our online campus. And we hope you'll drop a comment. You'll like our page or subscribe to our channel, whatever what platform you're watching on. And just let us know that you're there in the comments so we can with you as well. Church, we hope that you'll plug into a life group this week. Go to our website, agfpw.org, or I think we do have bulletins. Is that right? Do we have some today? No, not today. Well, go to our website, and we've got a calendar that is detailed. It has all of our happening all throughout the week. Plug into something, okay? Uh, get encouraged with other believers. You encourage somebody, they encourage you, and guess what? You grow in your faith. It's a beautiful thing. God made for community, didn't he? Yeah. Amen. There's no Lone Ranger Christians. There's some that are trying to be, but that's not the way to go. The Lone Ranger had Tonto, right? And he had Silver, right? His trusted steed. So he didn't go it alone, even though his name lied. Okay. 
All right, so 2021, abounding in hope. That is our annual theme. You see green. And if you were not at the annual meeting when we unveiled this thing here, uh, we did hand out man- magnets. And so the greeters at the door do have magnets. They were handing them out as you came in. But if you didn't get one, be sure to see our greeters upon you and uh, go ahead and get one of those magnets for your fridge or the back of your car and uh, let it reminder that uh, our hope is in Christ this year, no matter. Amen. Amen. Great to be with you all today. Let's have a great service. Pastor Will, our youth pastor, come on up. We love and appreciate this young buck. Good morning, church. Speaking of young, I, I'm about to level with like maybe like 60 to 50% of the room. How many of you guys are not tech savvy? Like you, you fall into that category. Okay. I'm 22 and I'm the least tech savvy 22 year old world. I don't know how to use like 80, 80% of the things they try to get me to use. But we have an amazing way on how we have our offering set up. Guys, it is super easy, convenient. I mean, I'm, I could not do this, but we have it set up great for you guys. So, of course, we have our drop boxes. You guys know they're located there. They're at the back. You guys can see there's even one downstairs as you guys exit. We also have online at our website. Also, we have text. So just pull out your phones, type in that. Super easy and convenient, guys. It is unbelievably simple. So... But we just want to move on, guys, and we're going to move into a moment of prayer where we're going to pray over an offering that God would just have his way with us. He would have his way over our finances, whatever is moving towards, all right? Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Father, we thank you for the message you're about to bring. Father, ultimately, you are control over our lives. And Father, we thank you for what you're going to do with this money, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do with this offering, Lord. Lord, we pray and go and bless. Lord, we begin to go and bless those who need it, Lord, to, Lord, those who are just in those dark moments right now where they need a blessing from you, Lord. I pray we would be that blessing. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, bless Pastor Mark, bless his message, and we thank you for today. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see you all in God's house. I was wondering, Ron, if I was going to be able to preach today because I uh, got a hold of this this morning. Praise until the spirit of worship comes. Did the spirit of worship come? And then worship until the glory falls. And I was saying, Lord, let your glory fall in this place. And then stand in the glory. Hallelujah. How we long to stand the glory of God. Where God can do what man can't do. With God all things are possible. Right? With man things are impossible. But with God. Con Dios. Todos los cosas son posibles. Amen. Amen. God. Do it again. God, get Kelly out of the way. God, get Pastor Mark out of the way. God, get me out of the way. Could you pray that with me? God, get me out of the way that you might have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I kind of feel like I'm filled today with praise and with power. And with glory. God, speak to us, I pray. I thank you for what Pastor Rob prayed this morning. That we are uh, the, the, the thermostat and not the thermometer. God, I pray you'll turn up the heat. I pray, oh God, that you'll baptize us afresh and anew with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I pray, oh God, today that you would cause your church to be hot. Not cold, not lukewarm, but hot, red hot. For our God is a consuming fire, and His ministers are a flame of fire. Oh God, I praise you today that you're going to take us from empty to filled. Speak, Lord. Speak to every heart. Hide behind the cross. I thank you for a church that prays for their pastors. Oh, God, have your way in this place today, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. And you know what? Can we also pray, Father, for those who are in their home, who are 
online who are worshiping, let your presence fill their home right now, I pray. God, I praise you for the glory of God that, that covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. Let your glory fill every home that's tuned in this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I do want to say to those who are watching online, if you would be so kind to just share uh, the link and uh, how, how easy it, is it for us to share the link, right? And uh, who knows, maybe we can get uh, more people from throughout our nation or maybe more nations to join in, tune in even this morning because right now you will take time to simply push a button and share the link. Amen. God Answers Prayer is the title of our series. How many of you could say of a truth, God has answered your prayer before or in the past? You're trying him for answered prayer even today. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 is our theme verse. Why don't we say it again? The Bible says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. We stated, and I'll say it again, our series goal for this new year has been to help individual Christians to become people of prayer and for churches to become houses of prayer. I'll remind you, Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, that men ought always to pray and not give up. The greatest secret to answered prayer is to never, never, never give up. God does a part, but He does everything by it. Every is called to a life of prayer. James 4.10 Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourselves in the sight of God and here's Thomas, and he will lift you up. How many of you feel like you could use a little lift today? Yeah, then if you simply just humble yourself in the sight of God, the Bible promises that he will lift you up. I don't know who said this, but someone once said, God doesn't answer email, just knee mail. And so we got to... We got to humble ourselves and we got to call on God today. I'll tell you this much the devil himself hates when we pray. He really doesn't mind if you go to church. He really doesn't mind if you call yourself a Christian. Why? Because he knows when you humble yourself and pray, you're calling upon God's mighty, outstretched hand. To be shown forth. And I pray in God help us to get a hold of this in this year. Help us to be a people of prayer. And a church that prays. Jesus says my house shall be called a house of prayer for many nations. And may we lay hold of this truth and pray as we've never prayed before. Today I get to preach to you a message titled from empty to field. Empty to field. And I've got a big idea. It's really simple. Maybe you could write it down in your note. Big idea. Empty to field. Life without God is empty. And I will share this morning that there are so many without God in our nation and in our world who are empty. In our land today. Kind of like that old Jackson Brown song. Running on empty. Huh? Yeah. Running blind. Yeah. So many running on empty. And perhaps you're here today. Or perhaps you're listening online. And you're without God. And maybe you're empty. Or defeated. Or deflated. Or alone. And without hope. Today is the day that you can go from empty to full 
Hallelujah. To being filled with God and being filled with hope. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, one of the most common refrains we hear from those who have reached the pinnacle of success is that of emptiness. Emptiness that stalks their lives despite all of their successes. I think of Boris Becker. I believe he's that German singles tennis player who not only won one Wimbledon, two Wimbledons, but three Wimbledons. Two Australia Open victories and one U.S. Open and has an Olympic gold medal in doubles. Yet this 50-year-old man who's still with us today struggles according to news reports with suicide. Failed relationship after failed relationship after failed relationship. And isn't it true? You can have the world's goods and its treasures, but if you have not, you're running on empty. Think a moment with me. Elvis. Elvis Presley. All the fame and fortune. The king of rock and roll struggled in life and ended up empty, empty handed for sure. This is his quote. Fame and fortune, how empty can they be? For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet lose his own soul or lose his own life? I like the way the Amplified Bible reads. For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world with all its pleasures and forfeit his soul? The Bible tells us, take heed and beware. Beware, church. Beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Perhaps better yet, a man's life consists of, how, of who possesses him. Right? You can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Only Jesus truly says. The psalmist says, because the Lord is my shepherd... I have everything I need. So the big question is, how does one really achieve success? And I, I could just simply say this. I believe success is found in knowing and obeying the God of the Holy Scripture. Joshua, Moses' successor, is about to lead the children of Israel into their promised land. And uh, he's going to encounter enemy after enemy after enemy. And uh, the call of God in Joshua 1.9 was for him to be bold. For him to be strong. For him to be courageous. If he is going to lead the people of God into the promised land. The land flowing with milk and honey. But... Listen to what God told Joshua. He said, Joshua, this book of the law, this is before he told him to be strong and courageous. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous. You will success. No, you will have good success. I'll tell you, this book of the law, it's the greatest treasure that you and I possess. And I'm praying that God would fill us full of His Word. You cannot define success apart from obeying and observing what Word declares. I wish the younger generation would get a hold of that. All people get a hold of it. But in this crazy cancel culture that we're living in, 
And this backward culture that we're living in, it's a sign of the times. I'm here to tell you, heaven and it'll pass away, but my words will forever. The, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord, they're pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. For by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. <laughs> Hallelujah! You want to talk success. I'm here to tell you, success is to know God and to obey God. God, give us a hunger and a thirst for your righteous, for your instruction in righteousness that's forever to cover from Genesis to Revelation. And then God, would you bless us with true success and not the success of the world. Well, that's, empty. that's emptiness. Let's talk a little bit about filth. Ephesians 5, 16 and 18. This really is our text today. Let's read together. The Bible says, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. How many of you here today would really want to understand what the will of the Lord is for your life yeah. and for your church. Yeah. Let's lay hold of this because we got to read on. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Not with spirits, but with the Spirit. Now, Let's talk about this verse a little bit. It's actually written in the present imperative, and it rightly could read, but be continually being filled with the Holy Spirit. Why, you might ask? It's simple. We leak. Yeah. How many of you have ever had to put oil in your car because your engine leaked oil. We all probably could identify with that, right? Uh, how many of you have ever had to put um, antifreeze in your radiator uh, because there was a, a leak that you were experiencing? Right, we all... We have a bathtub, and when you soak in the tub... You put the stopper down, but uh, the house is almost 50 years old. And so it, it, it just leaks a little. So you got to refill it with hot water if you're taking a nice soak. But you all understand that, that, that we, we leak. And um, so, so the Bible tells us to, to, to be being filled continually with the Spirit. Don't rely on yesteryear's baptism. Will, you've got youth uh, coming up in the summer. We pray, Lord willing, and young people go away to these camps and God shows up and the wind of God blows and the young people are filled with the Holy Spirit. And, 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 but they can't just rely on that experience from five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. We got to continually say, Lord, here I am. Fill me, God, of new today. Fill me, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with fire today. You see, you got to understand too, this is a commandment, not a suggestion. How many of you want to obey God's commands? Then you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit again today. February 21st in the year 
2021 AD. John 7, 37 through 39. I love this passage of scripture. This is what the Bible says. On the last day that great the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, Oh, hear him say it to you and me today. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive... For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Can I ask you a question? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty for the Lord? There's a promise in Matthew 5, 6. Jesus said, blessed are they which will hunger and thirst after righteousness for they'll be filled. God, give us a hunger and a thirst for you that you may fill us afresh and anew. Maybe we need to do what the old songwriter said from years back. I still remember this song. It says, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard the Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Verse 2 of that song says, there are millions in this world who are craving The pleasure earthly things afford. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my up, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirst, my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Let's see him and ask him, Lord, would you us afresh and anew today, O oh God? Fill me, Lord. Lléname. Lléname, mi Padre, del Espíritu, mi corazón, todos los días. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill us afresh and anew, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and with power. Hallelujah. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill my cup in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. In Acts 2 verses 1 through 4. See, Jesus spoke whom had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. But Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. On the third day, He rose again according to the Scriptures. He showed himself alive for about 40 days to those disciples. And then he was taken up into heaven. But do you know before he was taken up into heaven, he told his last words, and I think we ought to hear him again with deep, deep clarity. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me beginning in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth and that includes your zip code 810. Put your number in there. God wants us to be a witness 
wants us to shine a light. God wants us to dispel darkness in this year, 2021. And I'm praying, God, fill us afresh and anew. It was the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit, Joel's prophecy came to pass. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Bible says they were all in one accord and in one place. And suddenly, another suddenly, I would to God that He'd give us a suddenly. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them. And the Bible says and they were all filled. About 120. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. As the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. I want to ask you the question. How does your spiritual fuel tank read today? How far can you really drive? On empty. This is what I've noticed. When the fuel tank reads fuel, there's no cause for concern. How many know what I'm talking about? But when the fuel tank reads empty, it's cause for constant concern. It's no fun running on empty. Isn't that true? A full tank causes you to cruise with confidence. Down the road of life. But an empty tank causes you to cringe with concern. Same as when you're full of the Holy Spirit. You have confidence. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. And am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I've entrusted to Him until that day. But you lack the fullness of the Spirit You'll be saying, I just don't know if God loves me. I just don't know if God is even care. I just don't know if God can use me. Isn't that the truth? But filled with the Holy Spirit and with power, God, fill us with confidence. Let me ask you another question. How do you know when something's full? How do you know when something is full? When it's running over. Right? That's how you know when something's full. How many have ever went to fill up a, a, a dispenser with water and you forgot about it and it just was running over, right? Yeah. You know what the psalmist said? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overruns. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, that's really where we minister from? From a cup that's overflowing with the Spirit of God. This spake of the Spirit out of His innermost being would flow rivers of living water. If we're going to make a difference in this year, 2021, we need to be a Pentecostal people filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The church God's using today is the Spirit-filled church. The Holy Spirit-filled, led, anointed church in this world. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was Joel's prophecy fulfilled. And can I tell you, it's still true. In the last days. How many of you believe we're living in the last days? How many of you believe we're living in the last of the last days? In the last day saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And you are a candidate. And I am a candidate as a believer for God to fill you afresh and anew. With the Holy Spirit and with fire. Big idea one, life without God's empty. Let me give you big idea two. Life with God in the Holy Spirit brings power. You heard what I said. Power. It's the word dynamos. It's where we get our English word dynamite. He, you shall receive power. You know why you need that power? So that you can go and, and, and do the greater works that Jesus promised you would do. 
Because He goes to the Father, He sends the Holy Spirit, He immerses us in the Holy Spirit, and now we get to do even greater works than Jesus did through the Holy Spirit. Jesus, can I tell you, you know how He did His ministry? Filled with the Holy Spirit. It says in Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went up in good, healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God was with Him. Is God with you? Yes, He's with you and He's in you in the third person of the Trinity. I pray God, fill us afresh and anew with the Holy Spirit so that we have anointing and power for our life and for our service. Let me tell you how it all happened. Jesus told His disciples this in Luke 24, 49. He told them, you tell... Now, we don't understand that word. Wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, Terry, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you're clothed or endued with power from on high. And as Jesus ascended unto heaven, they obeyed God and they went a Sabbath day journey into an upper room where there they prayed. And they supplicated before God. Day one turned into day two, turned into day three, turned into day four, turned into day five, turned into day six, turned into day seven, turned into day eight, turned into day nine. But on the day of Pentecost, day number ten, ten days of prayer preceded one day of preaching. Today we have it backwards. Huh? We want 10 days of preach preceding one day of prayer. Uh Uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. Prayer, my friends, will move the hand of God. But they tarried. They waited. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, Joel's prophecy became fulfilled in Jesus' promise. He said, John the Baptist, there's one coming who's mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to stoop down and tie. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Luke chapter number 3 and verse number 16 And it all took place on the day of Pentecost. Can I tell you in Acts 2.39, the Bible says concerning this promise, this promise is unto you and to your children, even to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes, the promise of the Father is for you in the year 2021. So be filled, be continually being filled with the Holy Spirit and God will do exploits through us. I said this, and I'll quote, This was the Holy Spirit speaking to me yesterday. Apart from God's ending, the promise of the Father on the day of Pentecost to those 120 hungry and thirsty disciples, there would be no greater works they would have accomplished. How we need more than ever before in these last days, a fresh infilling of the Spirit in our personal lives and in our churches. Amen. 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 Now you go home. We need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we leak. Jesus did His ministry in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And we need to do our ministry in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. There's just no other way that we're going to be effective in our day And speaking of effective, let me speak about one more thing. Boldness. Boldness. For God has not given to us a spirit of timidity. Peter was timid by the fire, saying, I swear, I don't know that man. But thank God he's a God of second chances. Peter's broken. He weeps bitterly. Come the day of Pentecost, he's in that upper room. He receives the infilling of the Holy Spirit and he goes from being timid to being filled with praise and power and he preaches a message that's probably one of the greatest messages ever preached. Billy Graham, notwithstanding, a great preacher of the gospel. I mean, you could go on and name all the greats, but Peter, read his message in Acts 2 and you'll see that on that day, 3,000 Penitent sinners came and repented. 
and were baptized in water. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, God himself wants to do it again. And this is how he's going to do it. When we as a church pray for a fresh, not day old, not week old. Does anybody like fresh bread out of the oven? Day old? Week old? Frozen? And then a year old? Fresh bread out of the oven. My mama used to make some of the best fresh bread, huh? Hun? How about fresh bread out of the oven of God? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. <sighs> Jesus, fill us afresh and anew with the Holy Spirit, I pray, to be your witness in our community, to not be timid, but to be bold in our world today. When they saw the boldness of Peter, and John perceived that they were unlearned, uneducated men. They and took note that they had been with Jesus. God, I praise you today that we can be with you. That we can praise you until the worship comes in our daily life. And we can worship you until the glory falls. And then we could stand in the glory. And we could come out from that glory. And people could see there's something different about us. And they desire it. You said through Peter that we need to be ready always to give an answer to every man who asks of the hope. That's dwelling within us. Christ Jesus. is the hope of glory. Would you stand with me? And How many of you today would say, Pastor, I desire a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit today. Can I see your hands? Fresh. Let me tell you what you can do. You can build up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Spirit every day. I'll tell you what you can do when you just feel like you just don't know how you even have to pray. The Holy Spirit will intercede through you with groanings that cannot be uttered. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I'm telling you, God wants a spirit-filled church in Pueblo County. And we're just one of many. Can we cry out to God, recognizing that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God, says the Lord of hosts. I pray, as you saw the hands that went hunger and thirst for a great outpouring of spirit upon their hearts, I pray, Lord, that you would fill us with a, a greater love for the lost. I pray today that your Holy Spirit in us would give us a great love for your word. Like you told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. I pray, Lord, that you would cause us to have a greater love for ministry to the Lord. For worship. Hallelujah. Because, Lord, you alone are worthy of all the worship and the praise that we can give. I'm praying, Lord, that the Holy Spirit through us can give us a greater love for the hurting. That you can fill us, Lord, not only with the spirit of evangelism and discipleship and worship, but that you can give us a spirit of compassion in these last days. You've blessed us to be a blessing. And God, as we think of the roof overhead and the warmth and the food, Lord, we recognize a world that, that doesn't have these, these riches that we have. I'm praying, oh God, would you use us to be evangelistic? Would you use us to be anchored in Christ? On Christ, the solid rock we stand. Would you cause us, oh God, to be those who will worship you in spirit and in truth, who will desire to stand on the glory of God? And then, Lord, would you fill us with compassion? Little 
wants to feed. Lord, one day to feed the world is about to happen. Praying that you could help us to sacrifice one day's wage to change their every day. Lord, fill us with compassion, we pray. Father, thank you. From empty to filled. Fill your church. One more time. Just begin to ask Him, fill me again. While you're praying that, I'm going to speak and ask perhaps there are some here that feel empty, alone, wounded, bruised. You've never made the decision to invite Jesus to come into your heart and to be the Savior of your soul. The Spirit of God not. All you've got to do is answer. Open the door. Jesus wants to come in and be the savior of your soul. Isn't that awesome? I still remember the year that he began knocking on my heart. I was empty. The world, the partying, the girls, you know, the high school life where you're trying to find yourself, it just wasn't working. Nothing works. Nothing satisfies but a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm praying today it's as simple as you saying, God, letter A, I admit that I'm lost and I'm empty and I need you to come and fill this We've all sinned. We're all empty without God and without hope. But if we believe, B, the letter B, if we believe in Jesus, He died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day, we can be saved. Letter C says, if we confess our sin to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin from all our unrighteousness. Isn't that great news? We're not going to cover for cover. If you cover your sin, you shall not prosper. But if you confess your sin, you'll find mercy. And so we confess not only our sin, but we confess Jesus today as our Savior and as our soon coming King. So Father, for those who are empty, and want to be filled with Christ and His power today. We repent and we ask You to forgive us. Jesus, You died on the cross and we confess You now as the Savior of our soul. Come in, save our soul. Men of in us, fill us full of the Holy Spirit and use us for Your glory with whatever remaining days we have. Here am I, Lord. I'm Yours. Use me as you would. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Let's worship. If you prayed that, we have a, a little guide that we'd like to give you. And uh, you could simply go to the web address on the screen. It says gojourney.org. And it'll help you in your month as a true Christ follower. Are you ready to worship? Come on, this team's ready to worship. Let's worship, why not? Hallelujah.
in your presence. Here we are, standing in your presence. Kind of glory come down. Please the fullness of your spirit. She kind of glory come. She kind of glory come. Release the We want more. You speak, and we want more. You move, and we want more. We want the fullness. You move, and we want more. You speak, and we want more. You move, and we want more. We want the fullness. Release the fullness of your spirit. Come, Shekinah glory come, release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory, Shekinah glory I can't get enough of your presence, Lord. 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 I can't the fullness of your spirit should kind of glory come. Kind of glory come. We want more. 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 More of your spirit. We want more. We want more. We want more. We want more. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shine a glory come. Shine a glory come. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shine a glory come. Shine a glory come. We want more. We want more, we want more, we want more, more, we want more, more of your spirit. We want more, 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 more of your spirit. Release the fullness of your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, hallelujah. He's releasing. He's releasing right now. Hallelujah. Be filled. Be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody 
in your hearts to the Lord. Filled with thanksgiving, giving thanks always unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Jesus, I am so thankful that you're the baptizer. I'm so thankful that you did not leave us as orphans, but you've sent another help in the Holy Spirit to come and abide with us and dwell in of us. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh and anew every day this week. And until you come, help us to be the Spirit-filled, Spirit-led, Spirit-empowered, Spirit-anointed church making a difference in these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now for bless, I pray, Amazing Grace Fellowship and protect us. We thank you, Lord, that you us and that you're gracious to us. God, I'm grateful that you hear you answer our prayers. I plead the blood of Jesus over our lives individually and over our church, our churches corporately, over our children and our children. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we people lay our head on the pillow tonight, that you'll give us that perfect peace because you're in control. Hallelujah. God, with whatever days remaining we have left, let us fulfill the will of God by being a Spirit-filled people. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go tell someone you were with Jesus today. Okay? Amen. Amen. God bless you. I want more. We could have another hour's worth of church. Sheesh. Wow. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come. Shekinah glory come. Release the Shekinah glory come.